God, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Y'all ready to worship God? Come on, you got an extra hour of sleep. <laughs> Are you ready to worship God this morning? Amen. Let's stand. Let's worship the Lord. Let's give God praise and honor. We just want to thank God for this opportunity that we are able to come to the house of God this morning and to worship Him. And for those of you that will be joining us online, just get in and worship God this morning. Let God touch your heart. Let God bless your soul. Let God do something for you. Father, thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for this service. Thank you for this opportunity to come and to magnify you and worship you and praise you. Bless this service. Bless the singing. Bless the worship. Bless the message. Accomplish your divine will in the house of God. We give thanks and praise to you. In Jesus' wonderful name, we ask all these things. Amen. Let's sing that song on page 208, Nothing But the Blood. Page 208, Nothing But the Blood. Blood of the Lamb. 
There is righteousness available to each and every one of us. Father, I thank you this morning for your goodness and mercy, God. Thank you for the service, the opportunity to come, to worship you, to praise you, to give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. I fly away, page 255. Let's sing a song. I'll fly away some glad morning when this life is over. that you have done. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your peace, the joy, the love that you have given unto us. Thank you for keeping us safe and healthy and strong. Thank you for providing for us, for giving us what we need when we need it, O oh God. Thank you for supplying our daily bread, O oh Lord. Thank you for peace. Thank you for love. Thank you, God, for your wonderful, wonderful mercy. We love and appreciate you this morning and give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated this morning. What a blessing to be in the house of God. What a blessing it is to worship God. Amen. What a blessing it is to worship God. Let God touch your heart and thank you all for joining us, whoever you are that is joining us this morning online. We just want to thank you. Open your heart to God and may God bless your soul this morning. She's going to sing us a song. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Don't stop worshiping.
precious blood of Jesus. Amen. Are we awake this morning? <laughs> Amen. It's good to be here in God's house. I missed it last Sunday morning. I couldn't stop <laughs> driving on ice. <laughs> I got stuck like three times <laughs> over the week. <laughs> but thank God he's good and wonderful to each and every one of us. The most important thing, thank God that we did not lose power through all this stuff. Amen. Yeah. And then I, I know there, I just, Chris just texted me, they lost power for four days straight in Texas. And a lot of people are still out of power for many days and water and everything. But I'm so glad that God gave us grace this time. Amen. Give us grace. And, and then, even though we got the snow in the ice, we thank God for we had power. Amen. Yeah. What a blessing. But this time we'll receive the Sunday morning tithe, and most of all, thank God we can come to church. The roads are cleared up, and, and we're here, and I'm excited to be here. Y'all excited? Yeah. Motivated? Yeah. Dedicated? Yeah. Fit to fight? Medicated? Medicated. <laughs> <laughs> but this time we'll receive the Sunday morning tithe and offering. Jimmy, would you help us this morning? Thank you. We thank you all for your giving. And thank God for all that you do in supporting the work of the Lord. Would you please pray? Father, we ask you to bless this Father to serve. Bless each one of us that are given in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 I know it feels a little bit weird this morning. Because <laughs> usually we're done with service by now when we get started. So. <laughs> to get to a 10.30 service. It'd be nice. I really look forward for that when God can open the door for us to have a better time Sunday morning. But, it's, but until then, we're going to take what we have and run with it, right? As the saying goes, we're going to bloom right where we are. Amen? We're going to bloom right where we are. We're going to give God our all and, and not, not worry about tomorrow. Amen? And tomorrow comes, we'll worry about that. Give God what we can today. But this time she's gonna sing one more song before we preach the word of God and let's enjoy. I don't know what she's singing. We'll find out in about 30 seconds. <laughs>
Savior. Amen. I want to read to you this morning from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 31 through 37. It will be our Bible reading for this morning. Mark, chapter 7, verses 31 through 37. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came unto the Sea of Galilee, through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf, and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the multitude, and put forth his fingers into his ears, and he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and, with, and said unto him, Ephrata, that is, be opened. And straightway his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plain. And he charged them that they should tell no man, but the more he charged them, the more a great deal they published it. And they were beyond measure astonished, saying, He had done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. And I want to use verse 37 as our text this morning. And speaking of the people after they witnessed the miracle of Christ. And they were beyond measure astonished, saying, He had done all things well. And I want to use that part this morning where it said, He had done all things well. And with the help of the Lord, I want to preach on a message entitled, Top Notch. Jesus is top notch. Amen. He had done all things well. Let's look to the Lord in prayer this morning. Nathan, would you please ask God to bless the message and the messenger this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord, for those that have safely traveled here, God, in your house this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you have kept them safe. Those that are watching online, we ask you also bless them as they watch and listen to your word. Praise your holy name. We ask that you bless the service, God, and the message in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for your faithfulness to God and all that you do. It's appreciated. But I want to preach about top notch. Now, if I sound a little bit nasal this morning, I don't know, something is going on, but who cares? I don't care about all that stuff. If I do, oh well. <laughs> but we know that most of us, we've been around for a little bit now, and um, I'm talking about in life altogether, not calling anybody old or anything, but maybe some, at some point in your life, someone no doubt have come to you and asked for a recommendation. Maybe they had to get their car fixed, or maybe they had to find a lawyer, or maybe a doctor, and they ask, is there someone that you can recommend? And if you know someone that is good, someone that is... Um, excellent in their trade or craft, a lot of times you will recommend that person to them because you wanted them to, to go there knowing that that person will do them right. That person will treat them right. You're not going to recommend them to the guy, the shade tree mechanic that don't do it right, would you? <laughs> no, you recommend it to someone that you can trust. And a lot of times we will say things like this, you know, you should go to those guys because they do really good work. Uh, or you can trust them because they're top-notch, right? And so it means when you say that someone is top-notch, it really means that that person that you're recommending to them is the best. They are of the highest quality and they will stand by their work. But it also means that when you send someone to them, you yourself don't have to worry because you have peace in your mind. You know that that person is going to do the job right. Amen? That, that person is going to get the job done right. And so that's what I want to preach about this morning concerning God. You know, we can recommend people to come to God. Amen? Amen. We can recommend Jesus to anyone because we know he will do nothing but good to their life. We don't have to be ashamed to be a soul winner. We don't have to be ashamed to tell people about Jesus. We don't have to ever worry about telling somebody, hey, you, get, you need to give your life to God 
God because you can rest assured when Jesus come into their life, they are getting the best. Amen? They are getting the best. And so that's what I want to preach about this morning. Jesus is top notch. He is the best in everything that we need. God does nothing but top quality or top notch work. Now we can find this in the very beginning of creation in the book of Genesis as the Lord began to create or recreate the universe or the earth when you know after it was flooded he began to dry up the water and cause the earth to come back to, 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 to be seen again and to replant the trees and everything the Bible said many times after the Lord got done doing it he said and the Lord said it was good amen it was good in Genesis 1 10 and God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called his sea, and God saw that it was good. What are you talking about, preacher? God does good work. Are you with me this morning? Yeah. You're not thinking about lunch yet, are you? <laughs> I know you're usually on your way home thinking about them fried chicken and biscuit, right? <laughs> well, let's focus for a little bit this morning. God does good work. God does absolutely good work. Even in Genesis 1.31, the Bible said, And he saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day, showing us, if you read the book of Genesis, that everything God did was top-notch. Amen? Amen? Everything God did was top-notch. Think about it. Who can build the earth like this? Who can plant all those beautiful trees like God did? Who can take care of it all? Amen? Man, we can't even handle a little garden sometimes. And yet the whole entire earth is being taken care of. By whom? By God. Amen? He does top-notch work. He knows exactly what to do. Who can build a fish like a, like a whale or a shark or whatever like that? Who can do it but God? Amen? Who can build a chicken that can't fly so that we can kitch, kill, kill it and eat it? Amen? And then you have the eagles that can take off in a moment. Only our God can do that. Everything about God is top notch. Who can build an animal like an elephant or a tiger or a, a giraffe or, or whatever? All the animals out there, there is no one that can do it but my God. Amen. He is top notch this morning. Who can make a, a human being like us? Amen. Whatever it is, all of us are different. All of us are unique. All of us are special in the sight of God. And all of us have our, our own separate. DNA, if you will, and no one else can do that but the God that we serve. Think about how wonderful Jesus is. Amen? Amen. So his work, I'm talking about the first thing is God does really good work. You can recommend people to God this morning, and I want to recommend you to Jesus. You need some work done in your life, I know someone that can do it. Amen? Amen. You got some sin in your life, I know somebody that can take it away. You need some Amen. spiritual power, I know someone that can baptize baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. You need some spiritual strength. You need some emotional strength. You need some mental strength. I know someone. I want to recommend him to you this morning. His name is Jesus. Amen? His name is Jesus. Thank God that we serve a top-notch God. He is the best that the world can ever offer. Amen? Or heaven itself can offer. God didn't give us the second best when it comes to salvation. God sent us the top-notch one, amen? He didn't choose uh, an angel, or he didn't choose some man, but the Bible said, For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, amen? There was only one, and God didn't spare him. God gave us the best that heaven could offer. And so we find also, even when it comes to salvation, God does a very top-notch work. Think about your life this morning and think about uh, all that God has done for you as the Bible tells us in, um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9. Y'all still with me? Yeah. Okay, just check it. <laughs> you know, y'all need to get a little bit excited about you, God. I know you are. I know you are. But you got to show it sometimes. Eh? <laughs> Preach with me. Don't be afraid to shout me out. That's fine. <laughs> let God... Let, 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 it makes it easy when, when the people get behind the preacher. <laughs> I was doing Bible study, um, what was it, Tuesday night. I was sitting there in the living room all by myself. 
The one in Natalie's teddy bear is here this morning. I think Alicia's got it. I was preaching to him. You see, he got saved. He's in church this morning. <laughs> That's me and a teddy bear having Bible study. But I'm glad there are people here this morning in the house of the Lord. But when it even comes to salvation, when it comes to salvation, think about how God changed us. Amen. Think about the work that the Lord did in our life. How many people have struggled to change their life? How many people have struggled trying to, to make things better every single year? To try to turn over a new leaf, trying to start fresh, making all these resolutions, but it couldn't do it. But just one prayer and allowing Jesus to come into our life. What a change. Amen. What a change he brought about. That stop notch work. Amen. I've been saved over 20 years some of you've been saved over 30 years some of you've been serving God for a long time change forever by the power of God that is top-notch work amen that is top-notch work this morning that God only God can do and as he shared here in in first Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 he said know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God be not deceived neither fornicators nor idolaters you know you get saved god you'll stop fornicating amen? amen you get saved you'll stop living such an illicit sexual lifestyle that is wrong in the sight of god you say preacher i'm a christian and i'm still doing that no you are not amen, amen. no you're not you're not when you get saved you will change. Amen. Yes. When you get saved, you will change. I'm not saying you'll become perfect overnight, but the desires in your heart will change. Amen. Yes. Sin will no longer be something that you're going after. Now you will want to be like the teddy bear. You'll want to be in church. Amen. You want to come to church. You'll... I'm just kidding about the teddy bear, folks. My daughter brought her here this morning. <laughs> teddy bears don't get saved. People do. Amen. But when you get saved, he said, be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor <laughs> I got a problem with word revelers or revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. He said, revilers, thank you, sir. I need help. <laughs> revilers shall inherit the kingdom of God. And he said in verse 11, And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord and by the Spirit of God. And so Paul began to show us in this writing, he said, we were just like everybody else. Amen. We were lost on our way to hell. We were sinners of all different sorts. Many of these things we might have been guilty of ourselves before we got saved. But thanks be unto God that when Jesus came in and performed that top-notch work that we were talking about, that work of grace, that work of salvation, he said, but now ye are washed. Amen. Thank God for a life-changing experience. Thank God for a salvation that doesn't leave us in sin. Thank God for deliverance this morning. Thank God that we are new by the power of God. Thank God this morning that the Spirit of God, when it comes into our life, it will wash us and change us and make us clean. God performs a top-notch work in his people. Amen? And so that's the reason why you can tell when someone is genuinely saved is they are changed, amen? Their yeah. desires change, their mentality is changed, their sight, their, their visual is changed. What I mean by that is they begin to see things through the eyes of God. And thank God for that. How many of us, if we haven't been saved, or we're not saved, how many of us today will embrace so many ungodliness in our life? Amen. How many of us uh, will see things through the wrong lens and say, okay, that's fine and that's okay. And we can, you can do that. That's all right. You know, all kind of sinful things that we justified. But you see, when God comes in, when salvation comes in, when Jesus, and Jesus is salvation, okay? You say, what is salvation, preacher? Jesus is salvation. Amen? Amen. You remember the story of Zacchaeus? When Jesus was getting ready to go to Zacchaeus' house, he says, Zacchaeus, come down. He said, for this day is salvation come to your house. Who was going to his house? Jesus, right? Amen. Amen. Jesus is salvation. He brings the deliverance to our life. He brings the forgiveness to our life. He is the one that does all these wonderful things in our heart. And so God, I'm preaching about top-notch 
God does really good work, is my point. Amen? Amen. God does really good work. When you recommend someone to that mechanic and you told them, or you tell them that uh, they are top notch, you're pretty much telling them that mechanic does really good work. That mechanic will not let you down. That mechanic will make will will put your heart at peace. You, you will know that when you take your car to that mechanic, uh, you can you can just relax and know that everything is going to get done right. Amen. And so that's what I'm talking about. When you come to Jesus, you have nothing to worry about. Amen. When you give your life to Jesus, you have nothing to worry about. God will do you good. Amen. God will do you good. He will do nothing but good work in your life. And that's what that's what we find in our Bible reading that I read to you, he said that the people, they brought this man to Jesus who was deaf and he had an impediment in his speech or a, a speech defect. Maybe he stuttered or maybe he, he spoke with a, with a lisp or whatever it is. <laughs> he couldn't speak properly. There was an impediment in his speech. And so they brought him to Jesus and asked Jesus to lay his hand upon them. And the Bible said that uh, Jesus took him. Jesus took him aside and he began to, to work on him. He began to perform a work in his life. In verse 33, he said, and, the, and he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears. And he spit and touched his tongue. How many people would be afraid for Jesus to touch him today? Oh, I don't want your COVID, Jesus. Jesus is not going to give you no COVID, amen? Amen. amen. Jesus is not going to get you any kind of disease. Uh, one man was, was, somebody posted this thing on Facebook talking about if Jesus today would have to multiply the five loaves and the two fishes and feed the 5,000, what it would be like today if he had to do it, amen? How many protests he would get? Well, Jesus, is that gluten-free? <laughs> I'm allergic to mercury. I can't have fish. <laughs> is that wheat bread or white bread? <laughs> Oh, people are so different today, aren't they? You know, thank God. You wonder why God worked so mightily back in the days. is because people were just simple, <laughs> simple. I mean, it doesn't let God just do it for me. They didn't try to reason God out or, or try to do all the things. They just knew when they saw top-notch work, they recognized it. Amen? They knew that Jesus can do it. And that's the reason why they brought this man to him. Jesus, lay your hand on him. We know, Jesus, if you can touch this man, we know that you will heal him. Amen? We know that you can change him forever. And so they brought him. And the Bible said, Jesus put his hand in verse 33. put his hand into his, his fingers, into his ears. And he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said unto him, Ephrathah. That is, be open. And the Bible said, and straightway his ears were open and the string of his tongue were loose and he spake plain. You see, when God touches him, it was a work of art. Amen. It was a top-notch work. It was quality work. Amen. It was quality work. His ears open and his tongue was loose. He could hear and he can see. Thank God this morning, God did the same thing for us. When we came to him, he opened our ears so now we can hear what the Spirit says. Amen. He opened our eyes and now we can see the things of God. And the Bible said they were so amazed. They were so amazed in verse 37 and saying, He had done all things well. In other words, they were saying, God does really good work. He not, he not only opened the ears, but He can open the tongue. He can open the eyes. Amen. He can, oh, he can cause the lame to walk again. Amen. From the, from the turning of water to wine to the raising of Lazarus. God does really good work. Amen. He is stopped not this morning. The things that God does is wonderful. Amen. It causes us to say, thank you, Jesus. Nobody else could do this for me. Amen. I'm here to glorify Jesus this morning. He does really good work. He does really good work. Amen. Think about it. And he raised that man back to life. What everybody was thinking, man, maybe the undertaker was said, there goes my paycheck. <laughs> Come on, Jesus, what are you doing? They already paid me to bury this man. Now you're going to raise him back to life? 
He took away my job. Even the Bible says when the apostle Paul went into different places and preached the gospel in Ephesus, they were all mad. Instead of saying, you know what? Look at all these people whose life are changed and they're turning away from all these idols to serve the living God. The Bible said the silversmith was mad. He said our craft was going under. We can't sell our fake God anymore. Nobody wants to buy our statues anymore. Why? Because Jesus was doing such good work in that pagan in, uh, this pagan society that where people's eyes will begin to open and see wait a minute this false God hasn't done anything for me I need the real God amen and Jesus is the real God and he's doing such a wonderful work in my life I don't need to go buy a God anymore I don't need to set up a statue in my house I have the real one I have the one that lives on the inside amen Thank God this morning that Jesus does really good work. He's top notch. Amen. If you have a problem or an issue this morning, I'm talking about Jesus can, can help you. Amen. Jesus can fix you. He's top notch. He does excellent work. The disciples had the same reaction when they saw the works of Christ. In Matthew chapter 8 verses 23 through 27, the Bible said, And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. In verse 27, but, when, but the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this? <laughs> Even the winds and the sea obey him. Amen. And so after the saw, Jesus did this mighty work. I'm talking about top notch, right? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about top notch. After the saw, Jesus, by his words, caused this raging sea to calm. They're like, what in the world did we just witness? <laughs> Amen. They said, what manner of man is this? What manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? I'm talking about top notch this morning, amen? We serve a great God. Jesus is absolutely top notch. He is matchless. No one can do the works that Jesus can do. He does excellent work, work that baffles the mind of those who witnesses. I'm so thankful this morning of all the things that God has done in my life, amen? I'm just so thankful that I don't have the second best. I don't have a, a, just a substitute. To, as we were teaching in the Bible study, I don't have a, a shadow. I have the real. Amen. I have God. I have Jesus in my life and he does excellent work in my life. And so this morning, I want to recommend him to you. You need a recommendation? You need a lawyer? We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. You need a, you need a physician? I got Jesus who is able to heal. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. You need a miracle working God. I have someone who said, I will supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. Amen. You need someone that can work in your life. I have someone I want to recommend him to you. He is top notch. You can trust him. Amen. He does really good work. Amen. Thank God. Jesus is awesome this morning. I'm excited about my God. And in Mark chapter 2, verse 12, after Jesus healed a man with a, with a palsy. Now follow the theme this morning, top notch, amen? Top notch. Every time Jesus does something, he just baffled the minds of people. And he said, and immediately he arose and took up the bed and went forth before them all, in so much that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw it in this fashion, amen? Amen. <laughs> Yeah. Man, we never saw it like this before. I'm talking about top-notch God, amen? amen? He said we never saw it in this fashion before. None of the priests could ever do this. The high priest couldn't do this. The governor couldn't do this. The mayor couldn't do this. We have never saw it like this before. Thank God we serve a God that can baffle the minds of people, amen? He's top-notch. He can do anything that we want him to do this morning. He is the best. I'm recommending him to you this morning. Morning. I have no fear in my recommendation. Jesus is top notch. Amen? Amen. His work is top notch. His salvation is top notch. What about his teachings? His word, the Bible. They're all top notch teaching, isn't it? 
Your Bible said in, in John chapter 7, verse 45 and 46, when the Pharisees send the officer to take Jesus, to bring him so that they can, they can apprehend him and crucify him, he said, Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? <laughs> the officers answered, Never a man spake like this man. Amen. Never a man spake like this man before. That's top notch speaking. Amen. Amen. That's top notch speaking, top notch preaching. I got nothing to that. I can't even touch the shoes of that. Amen. Thank God. He said, Never a man spake like this man. They try to get Jesus in trouble time and time again. And every time he gave them an answer, it baffled their minds. Amen. You know the story when they try to trip Jesus up and get in trouble, get him in trouble with the pol political powers. They wanted him to, to ask the question, Jesus, should we pay tribute to Caesar or not? Yeah. Amen. You remember that story? Amen. They thought, yeah. surely we can catch him in this one. Surely we can trip him at his word. But listen to this top-notch answer in Mark chapter 12, 22, or Matthew 22, verse 17 through 20. I'm giving you a lot of scripture this morning. I understand. We're here to preach the Bible, right? I'm talking about God being top-notch. I'll be done in just a little bit. In verse 17, he said, Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They said unto him, Caesar's. Then said he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. And when they heard these words, they marveled and left him alone and went their way. Amen. You know, God knows how to shut people up sometimes. Amen. He knows how to shut them up because he's just a top-notch God. He wasn't rude to them. He just took their own their own idea that they want to bring to him and said, well, you paying you're paying your taxes to Caesar, aren't you? Why are you robbing God of his tithe? Amen. <laughs> See, you don't mess with God. God understands well, how to drive the point home. He said, render unto Caesar, pay your taxes to the governor, but don't with Withhold your tithe from God. Amen. As he rebuked that whole nation in the book of, um, of, of Malachi, he said, This whole nation have robbed me. They said, Wherein have we robbed thee? He said, In tithe and in offering. Amen. And so he was driving the point home. He said, You give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but don't hold back from God what belongs to God. Amen. Give what rightly belongs to God. We bear, as that coin bear the image of Caesar, we bear the image of God. Let's give God. God was rightfully him. Amen. Here is my hands, God. Use it. Here is my heart. Use it, God. Here are my feet. Let me do something for you, Jesus. I don't want to leave this life saying, God, I could have done some more for you. I want to give him my time. I want him to give. I want to give him everything because this belongs to him. Amen. The spirit that he that I have belongs to him. The soul that I have belongs to him. This body that I have belongs to him. So let's give to God what is rightfully God. Amen. Amen. Jesus is top notch even in his answers to his enemies. Amen. Amen. Even his lifestyle was top notch. His enemies tried desperately to find something wrong with him, but failed every time. He lived such a wonderful life, such an, an example he set before us, an exemplary lifestyle, and a great example Jesus was. And he told him, even in John 8 46, he said, Which of you convinced me of sin? And which of you can prove me guilty of any kind of sin? And he said, and if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? And so he was showing them that everything, the Bible showed us every aspect about Jesus. His words, his teachings, his life, his miracle, everything about Jesus is top notch. Amen. And that's really the point I'm trying to share this morning. Everything about God is top notch. He is the best, the best of the best. Amen. And so this morning, I know someone that can help us. Amen. I know someone. I want to recommend him. Uh, I want to recommend Jesus to anyone. Anyone. He said, Preacher, there's some things in my life that are bothering me. 
There's some things that are stealing my peace, some things that are troubling me on the inside. No man, nobody knows about it, but I know about it. Well, how can I get rid of it? Well, I got someone that can deliver you, amen? Oh, I know someone that can help you this morning. I know someone that can touch your life this morning. His name is Jesus, and I want to recommend it to you. He does, and it doesn't matter how bad the situation is, he can fix it, amen? Have you ever take your car to somebody? And you think, man, this is no way they, I, can, I can fix this. And then you brought it to someone who know what they're doing. Amen? Someone who know what they're doing and say, oh, don't worry about that. I can take care of it. I can fix it. And then yes. they fix it and they end up running good and work fine. Amen? Yes. Well, I'm here to tell you this morning, in your life, you may have tried many different things. Maybe now you're here in the house, Lord. Maybe you're here in the house, Lord. I don't know. I don't take anything for granted. Amen? I don't take anything for granted, but maybe here in the house of the Lord or those that, are, that will view us online, maybe, maybe you have tried. Maybe you have tried time and time again. Maybe like a woman with the issue of blood, you've tried for 12 years now trying to fix your life, trying to change, trying to, to, to straighten things out, but, but you couldn't do it. Well, I have a recommendation for you this morning. Amen? I have someone I want to recommend to you, and I'm telling you, as a matter of fact, from personal experience, he is top notch. Yes. He will get the job done. Amen. Yes. He will fix your life. He will help you with the issues that you and your problems. He will solve the things that you cannot do for yourself. He said in Matthew eleven twenty eight. He said, "Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest." You can come through, man. We'll get to wrap it up in just a little bit. He said, "Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden." And I will give you rest. In John 7, verse 37, he said, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, Cast in all your care upon him, for he careth for you. So this morning, the message is top notch. I have someone I want to recommend to you this morning. Amen. I have someone that can bring hope to your life. I have someone I can recommend that can bring joy to your life. I have someone this morning that I can recommend to you that can help your marriage, that can help you with your children. I have someone this morning I can recommend to you that can help you in your spiritual life and in, in, in the things that you're struggling with. There is someone this morning that I want to recommend to you. His name is Jesus, and he is a top-notch God. Amen. He can get the job done. He can do a top-notch soul saving soul cleansing work in your life he can do a top-notch life changing work in your life he can do a top-notch healing and restoration work in your life he can do a top-notch life strengthening work in your life whatever you need this morning as you begin to play and sing i want to recommend this man this god to you i want to recommend this god to you this morning jesus the christ he said if i be lifted up i will draw all men unto me this morning it was my desire to lift up Jesus. To lift him up so that we can remember that Jesus is top notch. He will do a good work in your life. Just turn it all over to him. Whatever is bothering you, whatever is weighing you down, you're laden and laden. You've been heavy laden, bring it to Jesus. You've been troubled, bring it to Jesus. You've been dealing with some stuff, bring it to Jesus. He can get the job done this morning. Let's all find a place to pray. She began to play and sing this morning. We'll open the altar for prayer. Let's all find a place to pray. Jesus is top notch. He can get the job done this morning. Just give it all to him and let him help you. Father, bless and accomplish your will this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all find a place to pray.
in prayer this morning. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for each and every one that is here in the house of the Lord. And we give all the thanks and praise to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you.